Hello everybody, this is Matt from Megalo Mobile, and welcome to part 3 of this mini-series, Let's Make Solitaire in Unity. In part 2, we sorted the cards into piles and dealt them out just like in a real game of Solitaire. If you missed the previous episodes, I recommend checking them out first, as we will pick up right where we left off. In this video, we start by creating a way for users to click on game objects, and then move on to dealing the cards three at a time from the deck pile. As usual, all the scripts and Unity packages are available in the description, and the most recent version can be played in the browser. Let's crack on! To access the rest of the cards, we're going to need a way to interact with the objects in our scene. The first object that I'd like to be able to interact with is the deck of leftover cards. By clicking on it, I would like to display the remainder of the deck, three cards at a time, until there are no cards left. At that point, the deck would be reset and loop through again. When building this functionality, we need to be mindful that the number of cards in the deck will reduce as the game progresses, and whilst the deck starts out divisible by three, when we start removing cards, we are going to need to pay attention to the remainders. There are several ways to give players the ability to click on objects. For the purposes of this game, I'm going to use 2D collision detection and raycasts. That way, if a card is sitting on top of another card, we won't click through it and accidentally select a card from below it. To add collision detection to the deck, first we select it and add some components. The first is a rigid body 2D, the second is a box collider 2D. The collider should automatically adjust itself to the correct size, and the body type of the rigid body 2D should be changed to static, as we will not be moving the deck and there is no need to simulate physics or gravity. Opening the user input script that we attached to the solitaire game object we created earlier, we can start to build some basic interactive functionality. For now, all we need to do is click on the deck, but we want to be able to extend the script to click on other things later, like cards or empty spaces, void, get mouse click, if input dot get mouse button down zero, so if the left mouse button is clicked, then we save the mouse position in world units. The Z position should be the distance from the camera. Vector three mouse position equals camera dot main screen to world point new vector three input dot mouse position dot x input dot mouse position dot y negative ten. Then we send out a raycast from the mouse position down towards the screen and see if it hits anything. Raycast hit 2D hit equals physics 2D dot raycast camera dot main screen to world point input dot mouse position vector 2 dot zero. If hit, we find out what has been hit, for example, the deck, a card or an empty slot, and we can use tags to find this out. So if hit dot collider dot compare tag is deck, then we clicked on the deck. Else if hit dot collider dot compare tag card, then we clicked on the card, else if hit.collider.compare tag top, then we clicked on the top, and else if hit.collider.compare tag bottom, then we clicked on the bottom. Each one of these if statements will call a method specific to the action, so we can create one for each. Void deck, void card, void top, and void bottom. Deck, card, top, and bottom. For now, if we click on the deck, I'm just going to print to the console saying that we've clicked on the deck to make sure it works. Back in the editor, and we can add some new tags. Deck top, bottom, and card. We then set the decks tag to be deck, the top rectangles tags are top, the bottoms are bottom, and the card prefabs tag is saved as card. Just as we added a rigid body 2D and a box collider to the deck, we can do the same for the rest of the objects in the scene, including the card prefab, taking care to make sure that we also set the rigid body 2D body type to be static. I am also going to include print statements for each one of the other objects in the scene to test the collision detection. Finally, we can call the get mouse click method from inside the update method. Now that we can click on things, we can work on dealing additional cards from the deck. For the time being, we only want to be able to deal three cards at a time, so I create a new method, public void, sort deck into trips. We also need to create some variables to help us keep track of which cards are on display and how far through the deck we are moving each time. We can create a private integer trips and a private integer trips remainder to help with this. Trips equals deck.count divided by three. Trips remainder equals deck.count modulus three. I'm also going to create a new public list of strings, trips on display, and set that to equal a new list of type string. I also make a public list of lists of strings called deck trips and initialize it with equals new list of type list of type string. This will be a list of all the groups or chunks of up to three cards each. As I don't want to end up with duplicate cards, and this method will be used more than once to sort the deck each time the player has traversed all the remaining cards, the first thing I will do is make sure the list is empty by calling decktrips.clear. I will also create an integer which I'll call a modifier. The modifier will increase by three each time to sort the deck into chunks. For each group of three cards, we'll create a temporary list of new strings to house those three cards, and then add those lists to decktrips, which is a list of lists of three strings each. 
int modifier equals zero for int i equals zero while i is less than trips increment i list of type string my trips equals a new list of type string for int j equals zero while j is less than three increment j my trips dot add deck at location j plus the modifier deck trips dot add my trips modifier equals modifier plus three if there is no remainder this works fine however if the cards in the deck are no longer divisible by three then we need to get the remaining cards and add them to the list too if trips remainder is not equal to zero then there is a remainder list of type string my remainders equals a new list of type string again we'll have a modifier which will set to zero for integer k equals zero while k is less than trips remainder increment k my remainders dot add deck at location deck count take the trips remainder plus the modifier and then we increment the modifier deck trips dot add my remainders and we increment the trips as i want to keep track of where i am within the deck i also create an integer called deck location and reset it at the end of the script this will help us when it comes to dealing the cards out deck location equals zero now that we have sorted the deck into chunks of a maximum size three cards we can deal them out. To do this, we'll need to create a new method, public void deal from deck. Providing that the deck location integer is less than the number of trips, we will clear any cards on display and instantiate three new cards at a position offset to the right of the deck. If deck location is less than trips, then we draw three new cards. Trips on display dot clear float x offset equals 2.5 float for each string card in deck trips at the deck location. Game object new top card equals instantiate card prefab at a position which is going to be a new vector three deck button dot transform dot position dot x deck button dot transform dot position dot y deck button dot transform dot position dot z quaternion dot identity and it's going to be a child of the deck button dot transform we need the location of a deck button for this to work so we can add it as a public game object and attach it via the editor we also need to include an x offset as we want the cards to cascade to the right and we'll also need a z offset as we only want to be able to select the top card i'll set that as minus 0.2 float for the time being in each iteration we will increase the x offset by 0.5 floats to move each card out slightly further x offset equals x offset plus 0.5 float we can then set the name of the card correctly so that the sprite update script automatically makes the card's face appear accurately new top card dot name equals card we add the card to the trips on display list trips on display dot add card and access the attached selectable script and turn it face up new top card dot get component of type selectable dot face up equals true then we can increment the deck location before returning to the start of the loop if the deck location count is not smaller than the number of trips then we have moved all the way through the deck and we will need to restack it else we'll restack the top deck void restack top deck restack the top deck to keep track of which cards need to be restacked i'll create a quick list of strings to represent a discard pile Whenever a card leaves the deck, it enters the discard pile. Public list of type string discard pile equals a new list of type string. This means I need to add to it when the cards are first dealt to. Discard pile dot add card. And to catch accidental duplicate cards, I remove any cards that are in the discard pile from the deck. For each string card in discard pile, if the deck contains that card, deck dot remove card. Then we clear the discard pile with discard pile dot clear. That way it starts empty when we use it later. Back to the restack top deck method, I can use the discard pile to repopulate the deck with the cards we did not use at this time around. All the cards from the discard pile are added to it in order. The discard pile is then cleared and the deck is resorted into trips or chunks of maximum three cards for next time. For each string card in discard pile, deck.add card. Discard pile dot clear, sort deck into trips. As the restack method only happens at the end, I need to add any cards on display to the discard pile before they are cleared when we press the deck button and deal three new cards. We can see what cards remain on display by comparing the cards located at the transform of the deck button as that is the parent of the top cards. For each transform child in deck button dot transform, deck dot remove child dot name, discard pile dot add child dot name, destroy child dot game object. In case there end up being other children in the transform, I decided to make sure that we only complete the actions in this loop if the child is actually a card by comparing the tag. If child.compare tag card. Back on the user input script, we can now link the method called when the deck is clicked onto the functionality that we just created. The user input script needs access to the deal from deck method, so we create a private solitaire solitaire and find it in the start method. Solitaire equals find object of type 
solitaire. Within the deck method, we can call it with solitaire.deal from deck. Before we save and run, I forgot to increase the Z offset to stagger the cards on top of each other. So we'll just do that now. Z offset equals Z offset minus 0.2 float. We also need to run the sort deck into trips method before the game starts, but after the initial deal. Save and run it in the editor. Clicking on the deck draws three cards at a time until there are no more cards left and then it starts again. Perfect. That's it for part three. Next time we will start managing card interactivity, allowing cards to be selected and implement the rules for stacking cards. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit like, please hit subscribe, and feel free to leave a message in the comments. I'll catch you next time.